Albert here with Esports Heaven with Mithy who on TSM just got the fifth place spot so they're likely going to play against uh, whoever's winning right now Fox <laughs> versus 100 Thieves it was a shakeup but I'm expecting 100 Thieves to come out strong so probably against Fox again going through this process going through tiebreakers going through such an almost angsty filled weekend how does it feel to come out, you at least won one of the games, you didn't end six, you actually have some control over your destiny. How does it feel to go through it as a veteran player? Well, I mean, the tiebreakers, these kind of tiebreakers don't mean nothing for me because um, if I'm in playoffs, I'm playing to, like, I've been in playoffs before. If you don't win the whole thing, it doesn't really matter where you end up. It, it matters for Worlds, but if you're a shit team, then you might as well just not go to Worlds in the first place. I want to go there and do well, you know. So overall, this thing doesn't really matter to me as much as making the playoffs itself and like becoming a strong team and being able to contend, contest the the first place, you know. And yeah, that that's that's what we achieved yesterday when we won against Optic and TL. So I'm really happy for that. It was a great relief. Okay, so very relieved going into playoffs a bit stronger than they were a couple of weeks back. I'm curious though, do you feel like you have what it takes to take the entire thing? Do you think you can beat the likes of possibly C9, Fox, and 100 Thieves on your way out? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know how the new patch is gonna play out for us, because uh, we don't really have much time and everyone has to figure everything out for like an important, like an important best of five in three days, because Riot is taking away one of our days too, so. Uh, it's not the best kind of uh, playoff preparation for us, but I am confident that our team is like, yeah, our, our team just works together a lot better and we understand each other a lot better than at the start of the split. And yeah, I'm just banking on that. Okay. So going into the growth of this split, you started off not where you wanted to be. Meta was all over the place. Team wasn't even a full roster to what it is now, where you had Mike Young instead of Grig. You've already spoken about the many changes that have happened between the two players and how the roster interacts, but I know that Weldon's come in and he's you know canceled his flight yesterday after the games. He knows he has to be here for tiebreakers and quarterfinals. In addition to that, you also had Parth come back in, right? He was a coach prior on TSM, took a back seat, and is now here on stage with you know Song on draft duty with you guys. How does it feel to? have all these coaching staff and all these new hires that came in prior as well on this new iteration of TSM basically? Uh, well, there's different sides to it. I'll, uh, so I'll explain. In terms of how the coaching staff feels, uh, it feels normal because Parth has been a part of the coaching staff. He has been overviewing everything and helping out with draft for the big part of this, uh, this split and last year. So that hasn't really changed too much. Uh, in terms of Weldon, I've been working with Weldon in G2, so, ha so have Kevin and uh, Bjerg. So there's not much of a like big shift when he comes over. We kind of know what he, he comes over for and what he does for us, and he's, he's welcome. He was here at the start of our, of our like, pre-split, and uh, he's here now towards the end. So he, it doesn't really feel bad at all or any or weird that the changes are happening because our coaching staff uh are, is basically part lost and song so there's no difference there in terms of how it feels to have so much support it feels great and that's pretty much the main reason i came to tsm they the mindset that they have is that uh winning above everything else and they will make sure that they'll provide everything they can and make everything as good as humanly possible for us to be able to perform at the highest level and that's what I love about TSM and that's why I'm here. Okay, so let's get into what people have said about you in the past. People know you as, you know, the rumored coach slash player where you lead your team, you bring them up, you give them direction in game and this split on TSM Legends, everyone wasn't shocked but relieved when you said, you know, the idea of Someone needs to, you know, take this team and be the bad guy and just not really call someone, you know, a wrong thing, but rather tell people where they're wrong, give some actual direction and criticism and really grow 
from that. And you were like, I don't care if I get kicked, which is remarkable for a player to do that, but on TSM, which no one would have expected going into the year or the split. How does it feel for you, and what have you done, if anything, this split to bring the team up? Um, well, uh, okay, so in terms of what I, what people say about me or whatever, just I'm not gonna answer that's that because that's, yeah. Uh, so the main thing that was missing in TSM for me, uh, just things are a lot different with the other teammates I've had in the past, not just G2, just in general. Uh, it was a lot easier to talk a lot about a lot of the problems and there were a lot of fights and those fights, uh, I mean, sometimes solve the problem, sometimes didn't solve the problem, but they always create a sense of brotherhood that you achieve by fighting, talking, arguing, you know, like all that. And TSM had like a system but when I came where it was like, we do review, we do this, everyone like kind of pinpoints, critics, criticize feedbacks, you know, but there's not like a, you're not really attacking the core issue of the problems in most of the cases, you're just tackling the problems themselves. And uh, that doesn't really f fix, like it fixes maybe that problem, which can maybe reoccur or something new comes up because you're not really fi going deep into the core and like actually understanding how your teammate thinks, how your teammate wants to play, what he wants from you. And you know, like you just kind of start bonding. And I mean, it took a while. I didn't really know what was going on because I also felt um, uh, like intimidated by the brand and by TSM and how, like, like you said, we have like a four-man coaching staff, you know. So, uh, and they're all really fucking good too. So, I just didn't. I just really felt out of place. And uh, aside from that, there was like also some personal things that just didn't really feel like at home, you know. So I just wanted to make sure that at least for the rest of the split, the team and just like in general, I felt good about myself being here and doing what I'm doing. So, I mean, sure it was not selfish to do what I did, but in a, in a way it also was because it was mostly about me just making sure that if things go wrong, I'm not regretting like giving my best. And for me to give my best, I just have a different way of approaching review and approaching just being a team and mm -hmm. that's just not something that so for me the easiest way to explain it is sure I'm getting paid sure it's my job that I'm playing but if you're living with a person 24 7 you're working with them 24 7 and you're striving to achieve the same goal which is like to be the best or to win everything like you're you're doing more than just a job, you know, like you, that has to become your lifestyle, your life and your, your, like you, you have to work towards that goal together. So it's a little bit, I mean, I don't want to compare it to war, but it's a little bit like that where you kind of like have to have each other's back and trust that that person is going to be the right one to like pull you up and pick you up when you're down, you know, and uh, have that sense of brotherhood. And that's just something that d wasn't really being built up in TSM. And that's something I tried to just tell my teammates how I felt and that that was something that I was missing and they've been uh, trying to understand me and help me out you know so yeah it's, it's just hard to explain what you see in TSM is not really all, all, all there is but I hope hopefully this explains something yeah no definitely um, a, a lot of words there are a lot of important things brotherhood being core to a team's true success and you're seeing this in all the top teams even SKT where you have such important connections, trust, and communication. Where if it falls out, you end up looking like you know maybe Golden Guardians, maybe someone on on the lower echelons, which do not see success and do not see growth and do not see refinement. Mm -hmm. TSM and CLG were in the same place early on in the split. CLG ended up ninth, whereas TSM is now ending in playoffs, secured fifth place. Not maybe what they wanted to be at the beginning, but somewhere closer. To give it a final question, the last time that you were in a situation like this where you weren't, you know, given a buy into playoffs and you weren't 100% maybe the most confident that you, you could win it all, right, was not only last split, but on Origin. Mm -hmm. How does it feel going from then and revisiting that feeling? And how do you think you'll be able to secure, you know, a strong performance where you at least place, let's say, second or get that world's buy? Um, 
Good question. Uh, so I don't really know what it. So for, for me personally, if I don't believe my team can be the best, I just mentally like I only play the game to be the best. If I don't like, if I don't feel that, like I don't know what it is exactly, but if I don't feel like that possibility to be there, I just I just get depressed. I just can't play. I I I, I just mentally give up. You know. So I find ways. To make that happen, so that I don't feel depressed. It's it's a selfish thing that becomes a selfless thing, right? But that's really how I feel. So I do whatever it takes to make sure that we have that possibility. And in TSM right now, I feel like we do have that. So uh, in OG, I felt like I felt the same way. I just felt like we had to get there, and there was something that was going on that was just utterly wrong. But in TSM, I feel like there is there's more of an opportunity than the one we. I, than I felt in OG, even though in OG we finished second, we did a good job, and we actually played pretty, pretty freaking good in the whole playoffs. So, not really sure what it is, but I, yeah, I still have that spark of like hope in me, and it's not just hope; it's actually confidence. And yeah, I'm just hoping to uh, play playoffs, and I don't really care who I play against. I'm aiming to win it all, and if we lose in quarters or whatever it is, and we don't make it to Worlds, then so be it. You know, like for me, I'm striving to be the best. If, if I feel like we can still contest for, like we can be a top two, it, it will be kind of close. You know, we, we we're still a good team. We just need to get better through Worlds experience and all that. Sure, but right now, all I care about is winning an ALCS. So I'm whoever goes in front of me, I'm gonna try and beat. I, I don't care about seeding. I don't care about anything. I just wanna win the whole thing. That's why I came to America. All right. Came to America to win it all. He has about a month left to do so. He has about a month left to get to South Korea, not to boot camp for next season, but to boot camp for Worlds. Anything else you'd like to add on to your fans, to all those that supported you, dadded you, sent you Reddit comments that just shit on you for no reason? Anything to say? Uh, it's actually been an interesting season for me because, um, so in, in, I've always been a player that has a lot of bad games, but end, end up winning somehow. You know, it's usually always been the case, probably because I had good teammates to back me up to. Uh, so it's just been something that I haven't really paid much attention to. Obviously, now that I come to TSM and there's a lot more of those comments, uh, it's something I have found I I'm very grateful for because it's made me grow in different ways that I probably wouldn't have been growing on if I had stayed in, let's say, G2 and things would have been the same. I would have been comfortable with my teammates, would have been comfortable with my environment. It would, just, it would have just been really easy for me to just go with the flow. So I think like on a personal level, it's, it's been a great experience to come over to NA and like experience just shitting the bed and like just everything in general, you know? Like sure, maybe we rise now and we become gods. Maybe, maybe we just shit the bed again, you know? But either way, I'm just grateful for the whole experience, and I think it's been something, yeah, that I've learned a lot from. And uh, I also appreciate uh, the TSM fans that, like, there's uh, there's some crazy people, right? Like, in a in a bad way. But then there's some crazy people in a good way, and it's it's just insane how like just how how nice they are to to us. Like, it's it's not I, I there's no words to describe it. I mean. I'm sure that those guys that are crazy nice probably know who they are. And I just want to say thank you to them because just keep supporting us. Like, you've made my life so much easier in NA and just love you so much. And that's pretty much it. All right. After transitioning as a full NA player for a couple of games, he really coming into playoffs this weekend with passion, confidence, love, and eager to win. We'll see TSM Mithy this weekend, hopefully victorious.